a uh, lot of familiar faces. So delighted to see you back. And this is my sixth investor meet. And uh, before I start, I would like to thank each one of you for your tremendous support to the business. Uh, what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is share with you what our journey has been and what our building blocks are going forward for our strategy. And uh, the paradox of the business always is there are aspects where we continue and there are aspects where we change. Safe Harbor statement. Our journey over the last 10 years has been pretty exciting for us. We have added about 21,000 crores as our delta turnover. We have increased our profitability, I would say, in a majestic fashion. And our market capitalization has uh, gone up by nearly 3,20,000 crores. So that has been the journey over the last 10 years. Very often, we get caught in with the quarter that has gone by and the quarter that is going to come in, but we forget to look at a bit from a longer-term perspective. When you look at a journey of the last 10 years, I think it would be very striking for you how the Delta turnover is significantly bigger than the absolute turnover of our nearest competitor. That indicates to you the strength of Hindustan Unilever. I'm going to share with you from each of our divisions one or two cases of some outstanding performance that we have seen in the last six years. First, I'll start with Heike, a very competitive category, a category where you have local, global, regional, all kinds of players. This is a category where we have got a fabulous rhythm, double-digit growth, increasing our market share on a consistent basis, strong play in naturals, and of course, our focus on innovations and premiumization has really come alive. The other category, and you know, absolutely pleased, is Tav, our hair care brand, which is also into skin cleansing. But when it comes to hair care, a brand launched in 2007 is now the biggest hair care brand in the country. The second is Color Cosmetics, where we have got an amazing rhythm. We are the biggest cosmetic brand in the country with LACME. It's an innovation-led growth. We have proven how, as a company, we can have a business model which depends on open innovations, where we have brought this huge amount of agility within our system. And picking up the local trends, we develop innovations which are most relevant for the local market. The third category that I'll pick up is laundry. Many of you who have been following HUL would realize that a few years back, not very long back in the future, in the distant past, this was a category which was struggling on the top line and had significant issues when it came to profitability. We have completely changed the construct of the category. We have grown handsomely and dramatically changed the profitability of the business. It is underpinned by some great brands with purpose and of course our focus on premiumizing the market through massive effort on market development. The fourth example that I'll pick up is of a tea category from a foods and refreshment business, our biggest part of the business today within the F&R division. Here, many years back, we had lost leadership. All of you know that a few years back, we have recouped the leadership. Clearly a category where we have bring to the fore our Vimy-led power, where 
We have great purpose-driven brands, massive market development, and we have now got very clearly a virtuous spiral growing in the company. The strength of HUL is that we straddle the price benefit pyramid and we have a fabulous repertoire of brands which we have made contemporary over the years. Many of these brands, I would label them as timeless brands. These were brands which were relevant during the previous generation, during uh, my mother's time, my grandmother's time, and even today, these are brands which resonate with the millennials. This is the unique feature of a timeless brands. So we have a portfolio of big brands over 2,000 crores, 1,000 crores, and there are many brands which have crossed the 500 crore limit as they progress towards the 1,000 crore mark. It feels good to be recognized across the spectrum, be it as a corporation, be it for the work we do as a corporate citizen, be the work that we do from an innovation lens or from an employer of choice. Across the spectrum, HUL has been very well recognized for what we deliver and how we do it. Now, good opportunity with the Modi government 2.0 taking over uh, the helm of the affairs again for the country. Good to reflect on India as a country. We are absolutely optimistic about India's future. It is not only one of the world's top 10 economies, it should be moving, if you look at the 2018 number, I think it should be knocking at $2.9 trillion economy. Fastest growing if, if you look at it from the last few years perspective. And if you were to just look at the momentum growth rate, in the next 15 years, India will become a $7 trillion economy. And if we bend the growth curve, increase our growth rate from the 7% to the 9% level, which is what all Indians are hoping that it happens, we would be looking at a $10 trillion economy and we would be moving up to the higher excellence of a middle income country. So it's extremely good to look at and say that during a lifetime, a country where we had a large chunk of a population at the bottom of pyramid, now we could be looking at calling ourselves as a middle income country. Now within this context, of course, the markets are changing and changing very rapidly. As the consumers move up the socioeconomic pyramid, the aspirations change, the ambitions change, the consumer trends are changing very rapidly, and technology and innovations is clearly going to be the bedrock of our leap into a frontier economy. FMCG in this context remains an extremely attractive industry. Forget a developed country, if you look at it from a lens of a developing country, we could move up to the Indonesia consumption levels which would be 2x the current state or move up the China level which could be 4x the current state. Now you could very clearly benchmark and say that China, which is a $10 trillion economy, if India was to become a $10 trillion economy, what would be the size of the FMCG market? Not very difficult to predict. Low penetration, low levels of consumption, and then when you look at it from a lens of premiumization, the industry is less than 30% when it comes to indexing at a price index of 120 and above. 
here i am not talking of premiumization at a much higher level or even at a master or a prestige level this is something which is just at 120 to the average of the market so there are massive opportunity to grow the nascent segments to grow consumption where the penetration levels are high and very importantly upgrade the consumer to the higher order benefits we are extremely pleased that hindustan unilever which has maintained its leadership in the country for the last eight decades is extremely well poised for growth our strategy if i were to articulate it on one slide is very simple and we believe compelling first is we look at it from the lens of a portfolio how do we strengthen the core of a business how do we create categories of the future we believe as a market leader the onus is on us to create the categories of the future how do we drive premiumization in the country the second part or the second leg of our strategy is what we call as the rigor and discipline how do we generate fuel for growth to invest behind our brands because india will remain a very price sensitive country india will still remain a country where large part of the business will be under mass and in the popular segment and then how do we keep raising the bar on execution the other important bit is how do we create structures which makes us much more nimble how do we create structures where we devolve more authority on our people unleash the energy of our people and very importantly how do we create culture which breeds innovation which attracts the best talent to us and where we are able to tap into the best human resource that the country has to offer us and last but not the least how do we build capabilities of the future how do we reinvent hul so that we are not only able to maintain our leadership today but very importantly retain our leadership in the future so as far as strengthening the core is concerned this is about making your brands relevant to the new age customers as well this is based on continuous innovations and renovations of the brand this is based on understanding the changing behaviors which gets manifested in the trends of the population and very importantly how do you keep strengthening the reach both the mental reach and the physical reach now for us core constitutes on an average about 40 to 45% of the business and once we implemented the winning in many india strategy core is distinct for each cluster and this gets underpinned by purpose led communication and multi year engagement platforms whether it is dirt is good which has been at the bedrock of the amazing success of surf excel or swad apne pan ka which has enabled us to rest back the leadership in t category or the work that we are doing with pehli tanka on fair and lovely or lakme fashion week we have built iconic engagement platforms it manifests in different ways but goes goes back to the core proposition of the brands the second is creating categories of the future as the country evolves as the country grows people move up the income ladder but also their craving for higher order benefits goes up and that is where our expertise in market development comes to the fore this is about understanding the consumer closely understanding the trends what are the more benefits that we can provide to the consumers making the 
it accessible to the consumers and very importantly scaling up dramatically a sampling program and a experiential marketing program now in the last few years we have scaled this up by a factor of 5 a market development today constitutes about 20% of our business where not surprisingly we are growing at 2x the growth rate of the market now when we look at a portfolio we also look at the gaps which exist in a portfolio and we try to plug them a couple of years back naturals reached a point of inflection we picked it up and we have made a very clear strategy when it comes to naturals we have our master brand liver ayush we are very pleased with the progress that we have seen in south of india we have done extensions on many of our core brands with natural variants and very importantly we have brought in specialist brands whether it is indu lekha where it's done remarkably well when it comes to ayurvedic oil then it's got extended to shampoos and then we have now brought in simple as well now for us natural is not something which is going to be a flavor of the day this is a trend shaping across the world and we will keep increasing and improving our play when it comes to naturals the other big shift that has happened is mna indu lekha has been a fabulous acquisition that we acquired 3 years back last year we acquired aditya milk we are very pleased with it it has brought in massive capabilities to us when it comes to a low cost ice cream player and then of course in december we signed the deal for gsk consumer health extremely delighted with this acquisition and we are very hopeful that before the end of the year if not a bit earlier the great brands of gsk consumer health will add more luster to our portfolio the other important leg is premiumization now premiumization it straddles both the core as well as the market development but premiumization is very important to become future ready and today our business of premiumization is over indexed to the market it is 1.3x the market and when you look at a market share it clearly indicates that we are very well positioned as the consumer moves up the benefit and the price ladder because we have higher share in the popular and a even greater share when it comes to premium a lot of this changing the shape of the portfolio has happened with a massive focus on market development the other important bit is the fuel for growth and how do we keep raising the bar i have been sharing with you how we have changed the paradigm when it comes to savings savings today in the company is as energizing as building a brand it is no longer left to the backroom boys to look at how we can save costs right from a marketing teams to our finance and supply chain teams everyone looks at where can we remove costs which doesn't add value to the consumer and how can we bring in more effectiveness and efficiency to all that we do now we have made this into a bit of a science based on nrm based on zbb under an overarching program called symphony and for the last couple of years we have had a great rhythm of delivering savings which is to the extent of 7% of our turnover now the savings that we are able to do you should remember doesn't all flow down to the bottom line 
We use the savings to scale up a market development program. We use the savings to invest behind our capabilities, but also ensure that we have a certain rhythm when it comes to profit delivery. It's not by accident that in 30 out of 31 quarters, we have improved our operating margin. We have always prided ourselves in being a great execution machinery. I think we have taken this now to a new level altogether. The speed of landing innovations, the art of pricing, the agility in the supply chain while we drive down the inventory levels and keep improving the customer service levels, the systematic way of expanding the coverage and the assortment in an outlet, and of course, a huge focus on the channels of the future, be it modern trade or be it e-commerce. The other important bit is our enablers. All of you would remember a few years back, we went into with a winning in many India strategy. We're extremely delighted that we implemented what we set out to do. India is not a homogeneous country. Our income levels are different. The category evolutions are at a different stage. The cultures are different. The beauty quotient is different. And today, we have tailor-made strategies for each cluster. It has added complexity to the business, but it is like a good cholesterol. It is a complexity which we welcome, and it's a complexity which we manage. Now, there are various examples of how we play the Vimy game, depending on the context. This is an example where some markets, we are driving penetration, and there are some markets where we are increasing the usage occasions of fair and lobby. Now, the other big change that we did was about two years back, which was setting up the mini boards in the company, what we call as the country category business teams. Now, this has, again, unleashed massive energy in the business. We've got 15 mini boards. And once we have the acquisition of GSK, we will add the 16th mini board. Now, this mini board, led by the leader, has all the functions around it. And they are completely empowered to deliver the performance for the year. We agree the guardrails, and then we let them be. Now, this is also, in many ways, freed up the top team to devote more time on looking at talent, looking at m and opportunities, and very importantly, focusing our attention on how do we reinvent the HUL of the future. The other important bit is our culture. I'm so happy to tell you that women now constitute 40% of our managerial pool. And by 2022, we would become a gender parity organization. Now, in a business where majority of your consumers and your shoppers are women, I think it's very important that we increasingly represent the consumer base of the country. Now, it's also very clear, there are very clear evidence that a more diverse organization is a more innovative organization, and a more diverse organization delivers superior financial results. The other important bit is our focus on inclusion. It is not just about gender. We are a national company. We have to represent the nation in every which way. We have to break the stereotypes. We have to break the myths that exist so that we have a more creative and innovative organization.
Now, we have also been focusing massively on the holistic well-being of our employees. When we talk about well-being, we don't look at it from a context of just the physical well-being, but we look at it from a lens of spiritual well-being, the emotional well-being, the mental well-being of employees, and a lot of things have been done to help the employees on this journey. We believe that when a person comes to work for HUL, he should be in his zone, a zone where he can perform to his best. The other big shift that we have done is our experimentation culture. Today, when you see the work that's happening on reimagining HUL, there have been many things which have been developed here, which have been rolled out to the rest of Unilever, including the Europe's and Americas, not just the emerging world. Now, all that has been done by a great pool of talent. Now, when we recruit some of the best talent in the country, and when you create an enabling environment, then you really unleash the energies. An experimentation culture comes from a premise that business entails risk and risk entails failure. So we have to be ready for failures. But when we look at experiments, we look at it at a sweet spot of experimentation. What is the unmet need that we are planning to solve? What is the capability or the technology that is distinctive? And how do we appropriate a large part of the value chain? Now for us, clearly, digital and data is going to play a big part. Now, we always used to say that our two biggest assets are our brands and our people. Now we talk about our brands, people, and data. We are aware of how Digital is reshaping the Indian economy from the penetration of mobile and internet, the dramatic fashion in which the cost per data has plummeted, the India stack which provides massive opportunity for the country to harness the data and unlike most of the resources which are exhaustible. Data is a bit like sunshine. And it is again the bedrock of AI. The more data you have, the better your machine learning and AI proposition would be. Now we set up a digital council so that we could accelerate the pace of reinvention. Digital council is led by me with representatives of each division and the function. This is not by hierarchy. This is by people who are tech savvy, who love working on the digital side. And this is what they bring the best to the party. Now we have also very importantly, set up mini hubs in our critical functions. The center of excellence in CD, the Supply Chain Leadership Forum, the digital hub that we have in each division and in the finance function. They feed into the DG Council as we get more ideas and we are able to replicate and transfer the learnings across the business. Now for us, the reimagining HUL agenda is a very holistic agenda. This is not just about digital marketing. It is looking at the entire value chain and asking ourselves, how can we intervene with digital assets and technology and do a paradigm shift when it comes to improving the customer and consumer experience? That is what our focus has been on. So whether it is picking up the consumer signals, through our PDCs, whether it is generating the demand, whether it is capturing the demand, or whether it is fulfilling the demand. The entire value chain we believe in the next couple of years would be significantly different from what HUL was a couple of years back. That has been our focus when it comes to reimagining HUL, and you will see a lot of it 
when you look at the session on reimagining HUL later in the morning. Now we want to make HUL a purpose-led, future-fit organization. Sustainable, making sustainable living commonplace is a very clear vision of ours. And for us, we want to be known as a purpose-driven company. We want to be known as a company which has proved that a purpose-driven company can deliver superior financial performance. And it manifests in many ways. First and foremost is through our brands, our purpose-driven brands. I've shared with you how we have built engagement platforms which are purpose-driven. And we are not going to shirk away from the purpose of the brands, even when a section of the population doesn't like them. And when we had our campaign, I want to thank you because many of you came out with huge amount of support when we did the Surf Excel, uh, the, the kid during the Holy Day activation. And many of you wrote to me, is despite the trolling that happened, not to shirk away from a purpose-driven communication. So I want to thank you for that. We have a very clear sustainability-driven agenda. Our first focus is on water. And for reasons that you can very well understand, most of the categories that we are operating consume water. If the water, if there is paucity of water, scarcity of water, our business will get impacted. We have done huge amount of work through HUF. And I'm very pleased to tell you that in over 5,000 villages over the last eight years, we have created a water potential of eight, 700 billion liters. And today we've got a rhythm that we add an incremental 150 to 200 billion liters of water every year. Now, 700 to 900 billion liters, if you do your math, of three and a half liters per adult and one and a half liters per child, we are talking about meeting the drinking water needs of the entire India population with the work that we have done on HUF. So what I'm going to do is share with you a film on HUF and take a look at how we have been living this purpose. The sound, please. It's also very important that we should change behavior of the people. And that is the reason we had this film. And take a look at it. One day in our village, someone has kept the water of the water. Why is
हमारे आधे गांव ने पानी पी लिया और एक शहर वाले का नहाना अभी खत्म ना हुआ When it comes to health and well-being, we have been working with the government of India. At the Suvidha Center that we set up in Ghatkopar East, now we are looking at expanding it. There are another three Suvidha Centers in the making in Mumbai alone. And uh, we have reached over 150 million people with a behavior change program and taking them water which is affordable and which doesn't have bacteria. The other important bit has been a focus on livelihoods. All of you know the story of livelihoods in India. It's so important that for a responsible business, you have to create an economic model where you can create more opportunities for livelihood. Nothing better than a flagship program, Shakti, where we have now crossed 100,000 women working in remote parts of the country who earn their livelihood by distributing HUL products and in the process give us unparalleled distribution reach. Take a look at the Shakti. आठवां हम पढ़े हैं बस फिर बाद में शादी हुई के शादी होके यहाँ आए तो देहात में पर्दा तो होता ही है तो दूसरे के दबाव में आ जाते हैं मम्मी पापा से कितना पैसा मैडजेस्ट करेंगे आपने ऊपर तो सेल्फ डिपेंड होना चाहिए फिर मुझे ये हिंदुस्तान लीवर वाले मिले तब वो कहने लगे हिंदुस्तान लीवर का काम है आप अपनी बिजनेस अपने घर में कर लो दो तीन दिन का मेरा बच्चा था लेकिन हमें दिक्कतें थी तो इसलिए शक्ति मैम ने कहा नाम मेरा लिखना मैं करूँगी फिर जब से मैं ज्वाइंट हो गई हम शक्ति डीलर बनने से हमारे बच्चे हमारा इज्जत करते हैं अपने बच्चे को हमने इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूल में दाखिल किया मेरे हाथ में पैसा है अपना जितना खर्चा करना चाहते हैं खर्चा कर लेते हैं यही सोचते हैं कि हमारा भगवान ऐसा ही दिन दूनी रात चौगनी पे बनाते रहे मेरा परिश्रम सफल हो मेरे बच्चे कामयाब This is for us not a small channel of sales also. It's a pretty attractive channel for us when it comes to sales. And what I'll do is during the break, you can come and tell me individually what you think is the total sales out of the Shakti channel. That's the quiz I'm leaving you with. The other important bit is sourcing our agriculture produce on a sustainable basis. Whether it is gherkin or tomatoes, we have 100% sourced on a sustainable basis. A few years back, tea was just 15%, now it has crossed 60%, and uh, in another few years, 100% of the tomatoes will be sourced on a sustainable basis. Plastic, which we believe has been one of the greatest invention of our generation, has certainly become a public enemy number one. It's not because plastic per se is bad, but because of the wastage of plastic which has been mishandled. So our focus has been on reduce, reuse, recycle and recover. But again, what it entails is changing human behavior. Let me share with you 
a wonderful film that we had on plastic. अरे गोरिया प्लास्टिक कहाँ गई? आकर गोरिया, आकर आ आ गोरिया, गोरिया प्लास्टिक गोरिया जैसे नादान जानवरों की जान ले सकता है About 23,000 tons of plastic, we were able to recover energy out of it or reuse it. And our quest is that we keep ramping up the quantum of plastic that we are able to recover. So we have a very clear and compelling goals. We have not wavered from it. We have been sharing it with you at every analyst interaction. It is consistent, competitive, profitable, and responsible growth. And uh, we want to very clearly remain the market leaders when it comes to fast-moving consumer goods. We want to be a purpose-led, future-fit organization. And we come from three fundamental beliefs that companies with purpose last, brands with purpose grow, and people with purpose thrive. On that note, thank you very much for listening to me.